Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the Minister Kimball here coming to you live. It is good to be back into the land of the virtual reality world because I, I decided to take a uh, um, unscheduled, unplanned day off yesterday and 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 what was what transpired was I decided to sleep the entire day yes I was a complete lazy bastard uh yesterday but I guess when you're getting older and you're starting to become old you start feeling it in your body and sometimes sleep is the best thing for you sometimes you just don't want to do nothing else lay there close your eyes and relax and get some sleep. And that's what I needed because the reality was I had been days upon days upon days uh, uh, satisfying tax clients and everything else. And I had not given my chance, uh, my body a chance to rest. So I did that yesterday and man, it was amazing. But today we're going to get ahead, go ahead and get into our quick morning Bible study. Uh, I'm going to get into one of those Bible books that you don't have because you just really don't want to read them, but I don't care. Uh, it is part of the scripture. We've already verified that. So I'm going to utilize this time to deal with those books because I know your preacher has it. And the reality of it is, I feel like it's a ridiculous scam if you're calling yourself some kind of a preacher and you realize that there's been more information that you are not been privy to and you don't want to go the extra mile to, to learn it and teach it it makes you a scam because you're only preaching and teaching what somebody else told you and showed you that makes you a scam i don't care what you say i don't care what your title is i don't care who you are where you go all of that crap none of that matters to anybody but you because at the end of the day the most high doesn't care about any of your titles he doesn't care about all none of that stuff matter of fact he doesn't even care about your celebrations because in the book of Jeremiah, he said, I call this, this stuff is vain. I don't want to hear your new moons and your new celebrations. It's vain. So all of your vestments and all of your clothing that you put on and all of that crap dressed like a Roman scam is vain to the most high. And so the reality is, I don't care what gen what what denomination you are. If you're running behind the Christianity scam, then you, my friend, are involved with a scam, so it makes you a scam. And the reality is, I know you don't want to hear it. I know you don't like to hear it. But the reality is, you better wake up and smell the coffee and understand that there's more to this book than what you think it is. So today we're going to get into the prophet Ezra. Ezra, you have a piece of his book in your 66, but you don't have all of the letters that he wrote. See, this is the, the, the big part of the scam. They gave you a piece of his book, but you don't understand the prophet Ezra is, first of all, the prophet Daniel's brother. And you don't understand that he wrote some more books than what you have. And these are the books that we're going to climb through today. I'm just going to give you one chapter and then we're going to move along with this thing. So let me share my screen here. And here we are. We already got this thing pulled up. Second Esdras chapter 16. I'm going to read this in the YouVersion Bible app because I cannot, for some reason, pull up my separate today. It's giving me a problem and that's irritating me. So we're just going to deal with what the Bible would say if you had all the books, but you don't. That's the problem. That is why it's very, very important to me to share these books with you because you don't have them. You have a piece and that is the problem. Here we go. Babylonia. Asia, Egypt, Syria, you are doomed. Put on your clothes of mourning, your sackcloth, and goat's hair. We know that the goat represents what? Cry and wail for your children because the time for your destruction is near. I am sending war on you and no one can stop it. I am sending fire on you and no one can put it out. I am sending disasters on you and no one can stop them from coming. Can anyone stop a hungry lion in the forest or put out a fire that is burning in straw or turn back an arrow shot by a strong archer? When Yahuwah sends that disasters, no one can hold it back. No one can escape the blazing anger of Yahuwah. When he sends lightning, no one can keep from trembling. And when it thunders, everyone is afraid. 
When Yahuwah makes his threats, no one can keep from falling to the ground in his presence. The foundations of the earth tremble. There is violent churning in the deepest part of the sea. Even the creatures in the sea are in turmoil when the Yahuwah makes his glorious power felt. He is like a mighty archer whose strong right arms bends the bow. His arch arrows are sharp and he never miss their mark once they are shot out toward any part of the earth. He has already sent out his disasters towards the earth and they will not miss their target. The fire has been lit and it cannot be put out until it burns up the foundations of the earth. The disasters are on their way toward the earth and like an arrow shot by a strong archer, they cannot be turned back. I'm doomed, I'm doomed. Who will rescue me in those days? Troubles will come and many people will groan. Famine will come and many will die. Wars will come and the world, world powers will tremble. Disasters will come and everyone will be terrified. What will people do when these disasters come? Famine, epidemics, troubles, and suffering are sent to punish and correct people. But in spite of all of this, they will not turn away from their sins. They soon forget their punishment. The time is coming when food will be so cheap that people will think a time of peace and plenty has arrived. But then disasters will spring up everywhere, wars, famine, and great confusion. Many people on earth will starve to death and those who escape starvation will be killed in war. Their corpses will be thrown out like garbage and there will be no one left to comfort the living. The earth will be deserted and in its cities demolished. There will be no one left to plow the land or plant it. Trees will bear their fruit, but there will be no one left to pick it. Grapes will ripen, but there will be no one left to make wine. There will be desolation everywhere and any person will long to see the face of another human being or even to hear another person's voice. Only 10 will be left out of the whole city and in the countryside, only two who have hidden in the forest or in the caves. When an olive grove is harvested, three or four olives may be left on each tree. When grapes in the vineyard are picked, a few bunches may be left even by those who look carefully. That is how it will be in those days. Three or four will be missed by the soldiers who will search through the houses to kill everyone. The land will be left empty. The fields will be overgrown with briars. The roads and paths will be covered with weeds and thorns because there will be no sheep to graze along them. Young women will be in mourning because there is no one to marry them. Wives will be in mourning because they have lost their husbands. Daughters will be in mourning because there will be no one to help them. All the young men will be killed in war and all the married men will die in the famine. Now listen to my message, you people who serve Yahuwah. It is Yahuwah's message, so receive it and believe what he says. The disasters are approaching rapidly and they will not be delayed. A woman in the ninth month of pregnancy may suffer labor pains for several hours, but when the time comes for the baby to be born, there is no longer any delay. In the same way, the disasters that are coming on the earth will not be delayed and the world will be grown when it is caught in its labor pains. Listen to my message, my people, and get ready for the battle. When the disasters come, you must live as people whose home is not in this world. Merchants must not expect to make a profit from what they sell. They must be ready to run for their lives. Their customers may expect to lose whatever they buy. Whoever builds a house should not plan to live in it. Farmers should not expect to harvest their crops or pick their grapes. Those who marry must not expect to have children. And those who don't marry must live as if they had been widowed. Anything that is done will be useless. Foreigners will harvest the crops, seize the wealth, tear down the houses, and carry off the children as slaves. Anyone who has children will be bringing them up to be slaves or to die of starvation. Anyone who makes money will do so only to see it violently taken away. The more possessions people gather, the more they spend on their cities and houses, the more attention they give to their personal appearance, the more angry Yahuwah will become with them because of their sin. This is what the Lord says, just as respectful woman despises a prostitute, so righteousness despises sinfulness. 
No matter how attractive it may look, righteousness will, righteousness will expose every sin in the world and condemn it face to face when her defender comes. Her. Righteousness is a her. So do not imitate sinfulness or what it does for in a very short time. Sinfulness will be swept out of the world and righteousness will rule among us. Sinners must not deny their sins. Though who, those who say they have not sinned against Yahuwah and his majesty are only bringing fiery shame upon themselves. Yahuwah certainly knows everything that people do. He knows their plans and innermost thoughts. When Yahuwah said, let the world be created, it was done. When he said, let the sky be created, that was done too. He set the stars in place by his command and he knows how many of them there are. He knows what's in the deepest part of the sea and the treasures that are in it. He measured the sea and everything that is in it by his word is confined. He confined the sea to its place and put the land on top of the water. Yahoo stretched out the sky and fixed it firmly over the water like a dome. He put springs of water in the desert and lakes in the high mountains so that water could flow down in the rivers and water the land. Yahuwah created human beings and gave each one of them a heart. He gave them life, breath, and understanding, which is the spirit of Yahuwah, the Almighty who created everything and knows all secrets and sees in all hidden places. My people, Yahuwah knows everything you plan and the secret thoughts of your heart. Sinners who try to hide their sins are doomed. Yahuwah will carefully examine everything you have done and bring you to judgment. On that day, you will be thrown into utter confusion. All your sins will be public, publicly exposed and the wicked things you have done will witness against you. What will you do then? How will you hide your sins from Yahuwah and his angels? Yahuwah is your judge, so fear him. Abandon your sins, put away the evil you have done and never sin again. Then Yahuwah will save you from all these disasters. A vast mob of people is ready now to descend on you and devour you like flames. They will drag some of you off and force you to eat pagan sacrifices, your pork. If you give in to them, they will ridicule you, mock you, and humiliate you. In many places near the cities, there will be violent persecution against those who fear Yahuwah. The attackers will attack, act like wild people. They will plunder and destroy without pity all those who fear Yahuwah. They will turn them out of their homes and take away their possessions. This will be the time of testing for my chosen people. And they will prove to be as pure as refined gold. But listen to what Yahuwah says. My chosen people, the time of ter terrible suffering is near, but I will rescue you. Don't be afraid or have any doubts. I am Yahuwah and will lead you. If you keep my laws and commands, says Yahuwah. Let's stop right there. So don't give me that. Don't tell me that I'm saved because I just said, oh, I'm sorry and I repent. Uh-uh. You better be keeping his laws and statutes and commands. So he says, you must not let your sins weigh you down or control you. Those who are chained by their sins, overwhelmed by the evil they have done, are doomed. They will be like a field overgrown with brush with the path across it. So choked with thorns that no one can get through. It is abandoned and doomed to de be destroyed by fire. So at the end of the day, you can play these games all you want and say, oh, that's not canonized. It's a reason it's not. That is prophetically giving you a picture of what is near. And nobody, my friends, nobody can escape or will escape judgment. I am the Minister M.L. Kimball. Until next time, be blessed on purpose.